Here it is, the long-awaited Event Horizon Telescope image of Sagittarius A star, the four million solar mass black hole at the center of our own Milky Way galaxy. If you just wanted to see the picture and leave, I'd love it if you could leave a like on the video on your way out. It would help me out a ton. But if you want to stick around and talk more about the picture, what it shows exactly, and how exactly they imaged a black hole, then get comfy, strap in, and enjoy the ride. Before we get into the details, I'm recording this video on the day the image was released, so I'm sure we'll learn even more about the image in the coming days, weeks, and months. If you have any questions about it, then please leave them in the comments, and I'll try to answer them down there or in a future video. Alongside the amazing images released, the European Southern Observatory also released this cool zoom in towards the black hole at our galactic center. Admittedly, at the speeds we're moving in this video, we're violating all of the physics that Einstein taught us. Luckily, that's the only thing violating Einstein here, because the things we're learning from this new picture agree perfectly with general relativity. So the wait to prove Einstein wrong must go on. The image is also the first direct evidence that the thing at the heart of our galaxy is actually a black hole. We knew there was something there, incredibly massive and incredibly small. So it pretty much had to be a black hole because we don't know anything else it could have been, but now we've seen it and we can say for sure it definitely is a black hole. Anyway, how do you even image a black hole? The only objects in the universe that don't emit light and absorb everything that crosses their event horizon. The short answer is that we don't really image the black hole itself, but rather we image the hot gas and dust in the so-called accretion disk around the black hole. This is a whole load of space dust and gas swirling around the black hole on its way to be swallowed up never to return. As it swirls around the black hole, it feels friction and it collides with other particles in the accretion disk, causing it to heat up and glow in a process called synchrotron radiation. And that hot matter is what we image. The black hole itself then casts a shadow against that hot disk, and that's how we see the black hole. As a dark, event horizon shaped shadow with a backdrop of a ring of gas and dust. I made a whole video about the exact process and the details of observing black holes with the Event Horizon Telescope. So I'll leave a link to that in the description and up in the card there. So please check that out if you're interested in more details. Let's now compare this new image with the previous black hole image we had released in 2019. This previous image was of a black hole in a galaxy called M87. And that black hole is both much more massive and much further away than Sagittarius A star. Combining these two things actually means that the two black holes look a similar size to us, and this is why they're the two black holes that we've tried to image first. M87's black hole is a 6.6 .6 billion solar mass behemoth that's 55 million light years away, while Sagittarius A star is only 4 million solar masses, and it's only 26,000 light years away. Data for both of these images was taken all the way back in 2017, and it took two years to get the M87 image, and five to get Sagittarius A star. So why did it take so long, and why was there such a difference in these times? Well, it took a long time because it's really hard to combine all of the data and make an image. These black holes, despite their supermassive sizes, are incredibly small from our point of view on Earth, and they need incredibly high resolutions to image them. Such high resolution, in fact, that we would need a telescope the size of the entire Earth to do it. Since we don't have that, we just have to use regular telescopes all over the globe, and use them together to look at the black holes at the same time. Each pair of telescopes provides us with data, and as the Earth spins, we add more telescopes to the observations, and we fill in more and more gaps. The results of these scopes working together is effectively one Earth-sized telescope, with resolution three million times better than human eyes, and capable of seeing bubbles in a New York City beer all the way from Munich, Germany. There's then the incredibly hard job of synchronizing and combining all of that data to get an image. This process is hard enough on its own, and it took a collaboration of over 300 people to get it done. But it was the same for M87, so why did it take another three years to see Sagittarius A star? Well, the environments that these two black holes live in are very different. M87 is a huge black hole in a huge galaxy, and we're looking at it more or less face on, so there's very little other matter between us and it getting in the way. However, to see Sagittarius A star, we're looking through our entire galaxy, so there's loads of stuff in the way gas, dust, and bigger objects too. And all of this has to be removed from the image so we can actually see the black hole. This is just the beginning as well, because it turns out that while M87 star looks fairly sedentary, the matter in the accretion disk on Sagittarius A star is moving, a lot. Check out this simulation of their relative speeds. Well, actually the matter is moving around at about the same almost light speed near both black holes. But since Sagittarius A star is over a thousand times smaller, it looks like it's changing an awful lot more, 
with complete orbits around the black hole taking just a few minutes. This makes it way harder to take a clear image of Sagittarius A star because it keeps moving while we're looking at it. It's like trying to take a clear image of a kid while they're running at night. However, despite all of the matter orbiting the black hole, relatively little of it is actually falling into Sagittarius A star. If you had the same diet as Sag A star, scale to your mass, you'd only eat one grain of rice every million years. The huge amount of movement of the gas also means that over the many hours of observing done for this image, since it's changing so much over time, many different images of Sag A star were produced. And to get this final image, the team basically just took an average of all of these different images. In the future, the Event Horizon Telescope hopes to release actual movies of the black hole gas moving over time. So definitely get excited for that. That's going to be pretty sweet. There's also a huge amount of data from all of these telescopes. If all of that data was printed on A4 paper and then we stacked it up, it would reach the moon. But all of this together means that processing all of that data into a clear image was really hard and it took a really long time. However, despite the huge differences in the environments of these two black holes, and also the massive difference in their size and distances from us, the two images look remarkably similar, telling us that despite the complications imaging black holes, they all actually look pretty similar. This is a nice piece of supporting evidence for the so-called no-hair theorem of black holes, which states that they can be described by only three properties, their mass, their rotation, and whether they have any magnetic fields or not. This image, beyond being beautiful and being a huge achievement to make it, it also teaches us quite a lot about Sag A star. Firstly, since the size of the event horizon shadow is related to the mass of the black hole, we can measure the size we see here and we can use this to confirm the mass of Sag A star at 4 million solar masses. We'd previously gotten this from tracking how fast stars orbit the black hole, but this confirmation is great. Just for comparison, the event horizon of Sag A star is now known to be roughly the size of the orbit of Mercury, while M87 star is bigger than our entire solar system. We also learned that Sag A star is spinning, and it's spinning in the same direction as the matter that's orbiting it in its accretion disk. Additionally, we found out that we see Sag A star almost face on, so one of its poles is basically facing us. We learned these two things by producing millions of simulated images with huge ranges in these properties, and then we compared them to the final image that we have of Sag A star. The best matches tell us that it must be face on and it must be spinning fast. This simulation shows that best fit model for Sag A star, but since it's a simulation, it has really good resolution, you know, just as good as our computer can make. And that's much better than EHT, to be honest. So let's switch this simulation to match the resolution that our telescopes can actually reach. And this is the sort of thing we could actually expect to see around Sag A star. Blurrier, but still beautiful. This is all pretty amazing, but what's next for EHT? Well, since this data was taken back in 2017, more telescopes have been added to this global network, and they've all been taking data yearly since then. This means that we can expect even higher resolution images in the coming years. And as I said earlier, movies as well. In fact, we know that just a few weeks before this image was released, Event Horizon Telescope was back observing Sag A star again. So we definitely know there's higher quality images of it on the way. The telescopes have also been observing more distant black holes that are very active and very bright. So we may get images of those as well, but these black holes are actually all too far away to resolve the shadow structure we see here. So who knows what they could end up looking like, but probably nice fuzzy blobs. Let me know if you have any questions that I didn't answer in this video and do consider subscribing if you enjoyed it. Until next time, stay safe team. I'll see you soon. Bye.